Michelle, what could you tell us about the NPV of the company versus the current valuation? Steve, we just had a value come out pre-tax NPV of $1.8 billion. However, we are trading 140 million market cap on the TSX venture. Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm chatting with Michelle DeCecco from Lithium Chile. In this interview, we dive deep into the company's PEA study done on their Era Zero project in Argentina. We also get into the recent news that the government of Chile is planning on nationalizing lithium, and we discuss direct lithium extraction technology and how Lithium Chile goes about evaluating the different types of technology that are coming to surface. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Today, we've got Michelle DeCecco joining us from Lithium Chile. Michelle, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Steve. So Lithium Chile, the company's called Lithium Chile, but I think that the the um, real value, I think, from a lot of investors' eyes right now is the project you guys have in Argentina. Uh, what's it? 13 total projects. 12 of them are in Chile, mostly lithium. There's a couple of uh, gold, silver, copper projects in there. Uh, but we've got the Arizero project in Argentina. What can you tell us about it? What's the recent news? Uh, what what should investors know who are new to the story? Yeah, this is, uh, like you said, I mean, we're named Lithium Chile. So you would uh, expect our properties to all be in Chile, but uh, they're not. It's about 2021 when we acquired this property in Argentina. Uh, I think we we saw that we could have a real advantage by having lithium in both uh, countries, Argentina and Chile. So we've only had this property for two years and we've done an insane amount of work. We're up to seven exploration holes. We've got three production wells. We've got a water well. We've got a permanent camp uh, that is really, really large and uh, can house not only the staff that we've got now, but future production facility staff as well. Um, we've got, uh, we've just updated our 43101 and we've got 3.3 million ton resource on this property. So that's really exciting. And that's what took us into this next phase of doing our PEA, um, which we've just released the results on that as well. I should mention that uh, we're really trying to expand the resource on these claims. And so we're currently drilling a new well in what we'd kind of consider virgin territory as it's in our Northeast corner. And we haven't had a resource yet in that area. So the numbers are great as we see them, but we're continuing to uh, to deploy money into this project and uh, increase this resource as much as we can. I'm interested when I hear production wells, um, I know you're from Alberta, so I'm, I'm not sure if you've worked in oil and gas in your past, but um, when when we hear production wells, w for investors that are kind of new to lithium, what does that mean? Well, there's a the difference, you know, I say exploration holes and then production wells. Exploration holes we do, we're using a diamond drill rig, which really has a bit of a smaller diameter on it. And so we're drilling these wells really for uh, understanding what we have in the ground. Whereas uh, production holes or wells, they're a larger diameter, we're using a rotary rig, and off these holes, we could use them for future production. So that's really the difference. Uh, because we're drilling brine, uh, we, we drill into the ground. Some of these wells are anywhere from 500 to 800 meters deep. And, um, and so once we've kind of decided that on the first well exploration hole, that indeed we do have lithium and there's a resource there, that's when we go into production wells. Now, now obviously, if you're going to get into production, you've got to set everything up. I see from the uh, economic assessment that uh, the initial capital costs on the project are expected to be 823 million before investors are freaking out about the idea of dilution. Uh -huh. You're going to have project financing that's going to take care of the vast majority of that. Uh, should that's Lithium right. Chile ever actually get there and not be taken out, which seems to be the trend for most companies who start to uh, approach that milestone. But um, for our audience, there's kind of hearing about that $823 million. What are most of the costs going towards to get a project like this off the ground? I know that number sounds crazy, right? And I should start by saying that just comparing it to, to other PEAs that I've looked at, these costs, they're, they're not conservative. You know, right off the bat, you've got a 30% contingency built in. So 183 million is just the contingency. Um, so there's your direct and indirect cost. Uh, DLE is $110 million. Utilities, $75 million. Infrastructure, $40 million. So there's a lot of costs um, that add up really quick 
Uh, but like you said, this would be next stage. We've also always said that we're an exploration company, a resource company. So just looking at this PEA, using the words production, uh, understanding that this PEA is really the basis to determine if our lithium deposit uh, could be moved into uh, the construction infrastructure and uh, production stage. It's exciting. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, but uh, are there any um, projects in the area that have been acquired recently near you guys? And what did their resources look like at the time of acquisition? You know, there's been a few. I, I like to look at Lytica as a really great comparison because it was right in Salta province, so it's close to ours. They had about a 3.6 million ton resource. Like I said, ours is 3.3 million. So this is a good comparable um, property. They sold for almost a billion dollars. Um, I've seen just recently through uh, a bid process that we're in with REMSA, which is the state-owned mining company, that people are willing to pay a crazy amount for properties um, and ones that aren't even as advanced as ours. I'm talking about, you know, just the land itself, undeveloped, unproven uh, land. So, you know, I suspect to see that with all of these, with a PEA, a pre fees a feasibility, it just, it moves us closer to that end result of production, whether we go there or someone comes and, and takes us out before that, uh, even if it's just on this property, it's yet to be seen. So how does the NPV, net present value, and the internal rate of return for the Air Zero project compare with similar projects globally? Well, our numbers look great. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. Um, our NPV, 1.8 billion before tax, IR 29%, and our payback really 3.5 years after tax is two, or 3.6. These are outstanding numbers. And in terms of comparing them to other companies, again, it's really difficult. If we're all using the same variables, uh, like the cash flow, the, the period, uh, carbonate pricing, cutoff grades, et cetera, then it's a lot easier to compare these numbers. However, that's, that's not reality. Uh, so you have to look at the big picture and see that obviously uh, payback after 3.5 years on such a large investment, that's huge. Michelle, when I look at Lithium Chile, it seems to me like it's tremendously undervalued and there seems to be a bit of a disconnect here. What can you tell me? Why do you think the company is so undervalued? I don't know, Steve. It's driving me crazy. We are so undervalued. You just have to look at look at the net present value of 1.8 billion and we are trading at 140 million market cap as of today. We've got more properties than anyone in the junior mining sector. We've got a resource of 3.3 million tons LCE. We're the only company that's operating as we speak in both Chile and Argentina at the same time. Cash in the bank, an amazing team. We're really undervalued. It's a good opportunity for our shareholders to come in uh, before, I guess, before the cat's out of the bag and everyone sees what we've really got here. I see that on the PEA, you guys are projecting a lithium carbonate price of around $21,000 per ton. Um, now, the price of lithium has been extremely volatile lately. Uh, what what sort of thought process goes into this forecast? Is that kind of just an industry norm? Or, um, I, like, I, I mean, the lithium ion battery is like a relatively new thing, right? Like it's it's not that long ago. It's basically invented as part of the Sony camcorder, which I think was in like the <laughs> mid 80s. And right. today they're in like every Tesla. Every and um, the whole concept of, li of, of lithium mining is relatively new. So... Where like where do we think that the price of lithium is going to be heading in in the next five ten years? Yeah, that's a it is a difficult question. There's no futures uh, futures market in lithium, right? I mean, like you said, it's this is a new this is new to everyone. Um, I think that you know when you have every country in the world committed to zero emissions, obviously you're you're going to push for this demand. But I also think that you know sustained high prices can really destroy demand as you have consumers that become priced out of uh, electric vehicles or or the battery that, that you were talking about, right? So we used um, a base case amount of 21, just over 21,000 US per ton. Uh, but I've seen from our contemporaries, even as recently as two weeks ago, them using a price over 23,000. I've seen another company use 25,000. This obviously has a direct effect on what your NPB and IRR are going to be. Um, 
and these these numbers, I mean, obviously we we get a bit of these numbers from historical data. Um, the particular uh, long term numbers that we used, we've got from benchmark. Uh, and so, I mean, as long as I think the industry is all using relatively the same amount of numbers, then you can suggest that the PEAs are all um, in a place that they're relative and, and can, can be compared. One of the hottest topics right now in the Canadian junior markets or uh, lithium world, I suppose, is this idea of direct lithium extraction. Um, at this stage where you guys are at, are you guys having conversation with, with the DLE providers or is that something that sort of comes further down the road? No, we are. But you know what, Steve? We're working with them constantly. Lithium Chile, we've got our own DLE that we've developed with the University of Salta in Argentina. And so we're well versed on the technology. I think, you know, we've seen over the last two years, maybe 100 companies step forward with their technology, um, you know, saying that they've got the best and and here we are. So when doing the PEA, we use Sun Resin and we use Sun Resin for a couple of reasons. Really, they're only one of two companies that are on a commercial scale. And so their data um, and ability to help us with the PEA, it just made sense. We visited their uh, their facility in China. Great company. They've got the experience. They've been, uh, I think their first uh, commercial plant was in 2017. So I know that doesn't sound like a long time ago, but with a new technology, they're really the veterans in the area. Um, in terms of moving forward, you know, we've got a lot of different companies that approach us, of course, and it all goes down to who's going to do the best job. Obviously, we know that DLE has its advantages because really it can cut the time that you're getting the product to market. So instead of it being 24 months, it can be 24 hours, right? Um, which is obviously an advantage uh, in, in any sort of industry. Industry, But you're also looking at increasing the recovery rate, you're reducing the footprint, um, reducing the water, the power. And so this is this is an important part of, of brine production. And, you know, I always say, Steve, because people get worried about technology and, and yeah, I've been in the oil and gas industry for years and, and it's always been the same thing. There's always going to be a new technology that helps us do our job better. So, well, it's it's nerve wracking and, and have we protect, perfected it? Maybe not. Um, it's not going away. How challenging is it to diligence or evaluate these different DLE technologies? Uh, like it's such it's such a new industry where, you know, everyone's trying to come to you telling you that they've got the magic bullet to uh, reduce your cost drastically. But you can only take so many shots at, at these technologies. Right. And it can just totally screw up your uh, entire uh, cost of capital if you don't pick the right one. Do, do, you, do you guys have like a team of consultants on hand who are, who are going through this technology? Like what's, what's, what's the process like to actually evaluate these different types of technologies? Actually, it's really cool because um, uh, me being new to, to DLE as well, um, these companies actually reach out to us. And while we're doing our exploration stage, obviously, we, we've got a ton of brine that we're analyzing uh, and doing metallurgical studies on. And so they request our brine. We send them the brine and uh, they do their thing. And so we get the reports back in terms of what the recovery rate is, um, the cost, the chemical cost, all of the makeup. And so we have um, the ability to compare each company and see what works best for us. You know, and Steve, you and I have talked about DLE before because it's it's crazy. Each well is unique. We're finding the chemistry, the metallurgical makeup in each well bore can be different. Um, and so that's why having these companies come take the brine and then being able to use do a direct comparison between each company on similar brine is, is become a really uh, great tool for us in, in kind of deciding who we use long term in a production facility. And, and I'd imagine a big part of that challenge is what can actually be done at scale, right? Like it's, it's one thing to be able to prove it in a tiny science project, but uh, when, when you're actually trying to produce tens of thousands of uh, tons of uh, lithium carbonate. It's 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 a bit of a different story. Let's get into what's happening in Chile because um, I find the Chile just to be the sort of interesting anomaly in the lithium world. The Wall Street Journal put out a piece, I think about eight months ago, describing lithium Chile as the Saudi Arabia of lithium. 
uh, but they may just watch this entire opportunity pass them by with everything that's been happening. Uh, they've obviously uh, been all over the news uh, with with their talk of nationalizing the uh, lithium resources across Chile. What do you think's happening here? I know it's crazy. Well, I think that when that uh, that announcement was made, I think it was poorly uh, picked up in the media, and I think that that had some damage because we've been waiting for that announcement for years. You know, we've been operating uh, since since the start of our company, really without a clear path in terms of what Chile's strategy was to move this industry forward. So the announcement they made to us was was great. Um, it's not expropriation as, as the media made it out to be. Really, it's a partnership. And so they are going to rely on companies like us, not only for our expertise, but of course, for our capital as well, um, to get this industry moving. They've got some of the highest grade lithium in the world and best quality lithium. And and so they're realizing there's no good in just keeping it under the ground for themselves. They need partners. And uh, so we're really happy. We, over, we have over 110,000 hectares in Chile. And while it's not completely clear as to what their, their strategic plan is, um, their announcement meant that they're open for business. So for investors watching this that uh, are, are interested in the story, over the remainder of the year, what are the key timelines or milestones that they should be watching out for? Well, we've got so many exciting things. Really, like I said, when we got this PEA out, it really, um, it just, it puts you into a different market because people can see what uh, what the possibilities are and what your future looks like, right? So, you know, back in March, we had announced that we had some expression interest and that hasn't gone away. If anything, it's grown. We're being very diligent in, in deciding what steps we take uh, to further growth for our shareholders and value because it's important. Every every little decision we make, it's going to take us somewhere else. And in such a crazy industry where, like I said, you know, people are paying crazy prices uh, just to get their hands on property. We're in a position where we've got a lot of um a lot of interest. We want to make sure we make the right deal. So we um, we're working through various uh, expressions. I'll call it, and uh, we're in a really great place. Right, well, Michelle, thanks so much for doing this, and uh, let's continue to to to, to chat as uh, we get more updates from the company uh, over the coming months. Thanks so much, Steve. I appreciate it. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.